You're listening to a podcast of Spurious Morality. And welcome to a podcast of Spurious Morality. The year is nearly over. We've nearly completed 2023, and we thought we'd probably better talk about some of our favourite big finish releases uh, from over the last year. So, through this episode and through our next episode, we're going to go through month by month and just pick out some releases that have stood out to us, that you know, been favourites or have been something particularly enjoyable, particularly special. Um, so joining me on this journey is Connor. Hello, Connor. Hello. Um, but just 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 throw out some favourites. What what has really stood out to you in 2023 in terms of Big Finish? There's an awful lot to pick from, I, I, and it's very hard to choose. Again, it's been a very, very strong year for them. I remember having a lot of trouble picking last year as well, um, and I'm glad to say the quality has held up. Um, stuff that jumps out to me straight away is this year's series of Fourth Doctor Adventures. I praised that very heavily at the time. Um, just felt like it reinvigorated the range. Um, bit of a shot of new life into it, and and it works really, really well. Um, I think it's probably my favourite series um, with Tom Baker's Doctor in it out of, out of everything that has been done at Big Finish. Um, there's a couple of very strong, we've had a very strong Seventh Doctor set with Harry and Naomi. Um, which I enjoyed, and we had. I keep coming back to Rani takes on the world, Bannerman Road, um, or beyond Bannerman Road rather. Um, just felt so, like such a love letter to the Sarah Jane adventures. Um, that sort of kicks it up into the modern present day as well. Um, that that character and so the that 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 little side of the Doctor Who universe or the Who universe as it's now called. Um. I love the way Big Finish were doing the Hooniverse long before the TV stuff <laughs> came along. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's I'd, I'd probably pick those out as my highlights. Those have been those have been a lot of fun to listen to. Um, I can't really argue with any of those. They've been absolutely brilliant. Um, also, going to mention uh, River Song, Friend of the Family, which was really early in the year. It was one of the first releases in January, but wow, it was good. Like that was proper top tier stuff and it's kind of a shame that the river song range has now ended because i was really really enjoying sort of that potential sort of slight change of direction that friend of the family introduced you know maybe we could do bigger stories like that now um but yeah it's it's kind of a shame that's gone but friend of the family was an amazing release um and in terms of not doctor who big finish brought back another uh much loved series from the past that Russell T Davis wrote uh it's it's dark season and dark season was absolutely brilliant big finish got um most of the original regulars back created a new team as well and just gave us four really really fantastic adventures and um, I really really like what they did with dark season so hopefully there will be more of that at some point down the line Will be lovely. It did feel like it was sort of setting up for a new era with a new team. Um, so I, I, I'd be very surprised if there wasn't more dark season at some stage. Yeah, it'd be great if they they sort of went forward with this new team, and then the original regulars could just drop in every now and again. And it kind of did get brought into the Who universe a bit because there was there was a not too thinly veiled reference to Unit in there, 
Um, so I'm I'm happy to call it Doctor Who. I'm happy to say that it's now part of the Who universe. And let's face it, Russell T. Davis would drag it into the Who universe if he could. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, as I said before, the plan is we're going to go through the year month by month and talk about some of our favourite releases. Um, obviously, we're going to be talking in a bit of a spoilerific kind of way. So please be aware that uh, anything that Big Finish have released this year, and indeed probably before it, because a lot of stuff links to other stuff, uh, is on the table for discussion. So this could potentially be quite spoilerific. You've been warned, basically. Spoilers, the entire history of the universe. <laughs> yes, basically, yeah. Um, so we are going to be all boring and traditional, and we're going to start the year with January. As I've already said, my favourite release from January was River Song, Friend of the Family. Um, but it's worth mentioning that January was an exceptionally strong month for Big Finish. I think December last year, December 2022, was a ridiculously strong month for Big Finish. And I kind of went into January like, oh, they're never going to do a slate of releases as good as that. And then they did. Uh, It was quite impressive, really. Uh, But we'll start with Friend of the Family, uh, which I I believe was also uh, top of your list, Connor. Yeah, um, so I didn't mention this one at the start, um, but it's probably my candidate for release of the year. Um, I was so impressed when I heard this. I thought... Because it was, I, th- I thought it was brilliant. Not just because it was such a change of flavor; that was a major part of it. But it's brilliant in its own right as well. Um, we did talk about it at the time, um, and I, I, I think it's wonderful that we got something a little bit more author driven. Um, it felt a bit more ambitious. It felt like it was doing more of an original take on River than the series had previously done. It often feels like she's tied very heavily into the Doctor Who universe, whereas this sort of centred itself on River as a character and just built its own little universe around her. Um, I think that's, a, I think that's you know, probably how a spin-off should feel. Um, so I, I, I was really impressed with this. As I say, it, was a, it, it feels a bit more author-driven. Tim Foley is one of the most standout original voices at Big Finish and you know whenever you're going into something that's written by him that you're going to get something very special. Um, I don't think I've heard a bad one from Tim Foley um, at all. Um, As I say, he's just one of the strongest writers I think they currently have in their stable Um, and it's a delight hearing you know, that he gets, you know, I, I they did this a, a couple of times, sort of around about that time. They did it with the War Doctor as well, where they just gave one writer, it was Rob Valentine in that case, they gave one writer just full reign over a box set, just write, write a series that's just all yours. Um, and it, it works really well as far as getting a long, a longer form cohesive story. So this is sort of like, this, is, this just takes up like a little four part mini series. I haven't actually listened to it since January because I've been saving it. I pick out my favourite releases to listen to in the last week of the year, um, and this is one of them. Um, so I haven't actually heard it since release. But it goes into... I, I love being able to say, here's a big finish story that's actually exploring serious themes. You've got stuff like intergenerational uh, trauma, um, this whole family's history, and the... I hesitate to use the word abuse because that's present in some form in the purest form um, or in the purest meaning of the word. Um, That is there a little bit, um, but it's, it's, as I say, it's that sort of intergenerational trauma thing that gets explored over this family from the perspective of a time traveler. And that's brilliant. Um, It's a brilliant concept for a set and it's very, very well done. Um, And it sort of ties into River Song's um, own character and her own story and history as well. Um, just t- absolute top marks for it. I can't speak highly enough of, of, of Friend of the Family. It's it's a very, very sort of uh, human drama, I guess, um, which I, I guess is the sort of thing that Stephen Moffat had write. It's a very, very human drama, but it's also got time travellers, time travelling stuff in there. Um, it sort of, in some ways, brings uh, the time traveller's wife to mind, which is 
what I think it's fair to say is more than a small inspiration uh, to the River Song character. Yes. So, yes, um, I, I think River Song's very obviously very influenced by Time Traveller's Wife and Moffat himself has adapted Time Traveller's Wife. It was quite a good series, which was, I can't remember if it was this year or last year, but relatively recent. Um, and that was a really enjoyable series. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's definitely the sort of thing I could actually see Stephen Moffat doing, that kind of story told in that kind of way. And the fact that it's done with a character Moffat created is is just brilliant. Um, and yeah, it, it's just, it's a really, really wonderful sort of four hour long character driven drama, uh, which isn't, you know, normally the kind of stuff we get in the Hooniverse, you know, let alone from Big Finish in the Hooniverse at all. Um, oh God, I'm using Hooniverse. I've started using it. It's a brand and it's here to stay. <laughs> oh, I've been, I've been sucked up by that, by that corporate. Oh, never mind. Anyway, yeah, the Hooniverse. Um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, I really like it. I thought it was such a brilliant release. It was nicely different to all the other River Song stuff, all the other Doctor Who stuff and pretty much anything Big Finish put out around the same time or indeed at all it's just it's uniqueness is one of the things that makes it so brilliant and you know i agree with you this sort of writer focused approach that we are seeing a little bit more of now we're not seeing a lot of it but we're seeing a fair bit more of kind of writers being able to maybe have a little more control over stuff that they're doing or taking control of a character or a range for a little while um, as you said, Robert Valentine's done it with, um, it was a Time War release, wasn't it? A, what, it was the War Doctor. War Doctor. Yeah. Um, and I, I think both have been sort of real successes, and I would like to see more of this. I'd like to see more three, four-hour stories by the same writer because it's, it's definitely, it definitely allows for something pretty brilliant. It doesn't um, even feel like it was part of the same range. Like it feels like its own standalone little special release. Um, it doesn't feel like it fits in with the rest of the Diary of River Song series. As I say, it does feel like it stands out and above that. Um, and 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 yes, as you say, you know we're not getting as much of the author focused stuff as I maybe expected we would. But I I like. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing either because it does make something like this feel special and. I suppose it retains the novelty of it, um, you know, more than it would if we were getting, you know, say an author focus set every single month. Yes. Um, that being said, we did kind of get another author focus thing in January, which was um, Torchwood Double, which was sort of a, a two part Torchwood adventure by Guy Adams. And it was released, I think part one was near the start of the month and part two was near the end of the month. Um, and again, it was completely separate from any other Torchwood we have. It was kind of a new era for Torchwood in the 70s. And it told a fairly different kind of Nestine Auton style, a typically more adult, more Torchwoody one. Um, and I thought that was absolutely brilliant as well. And again, it's they've just kind of rejigged the format, both the release format and the actual format of the story the range normally tells a little bit and allowed a writer to do something pretty different and pretty special. Um, so yeah, I thought Double was absolutely great and I'd like to see more of that kind of thing and I'd like to see the Torchwood range kind of rediscover that kind of experimental nature because it, it felt like something from the first couple of Torchwood runs. Um, it felt like you know, when we were doing things like the Doll's House and um, I can't remember the name of it now, but the, the World War II one with um, Simon Russell Beale in it. Was it the Dying Room? Yes, it was. Uh, that's the one. Um, but yeah, the, the kind of stuff we got when the Torchwood range was a bit younger, it kind of harked back to that a little bit. And I, I quite like using the Torchwood range as an excuse to explore Torchwood outside of you know, the the now or the last two decades or whatever. Um, and that's something that Double did really well. And I hope that we do get some more uh, from that era. I'd like to explore 70s Torchwood a little bit more. I'd like to 
hear more from Roberta. I thought Louise Jameson was brilliant. Um, you know, very, very un like but she is a fantastic actress. We know this. She's always brilliant. Um, I, 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 yes, I really enjoyed those as well. I love that torch. I love the torch with me and range doing something that's a little bit different and doesn't necessarily rely you having seen the TV series. Um, because I have seen torch with the TV series, but I'm not a total sort of devotee of it. Um, so I love whenever I can dip in and out because I think it's a very strong range. I think the stories, those little standalone one-hour plays are fantastic. Um, and I think that's a great format for Big Finish to use. Um, I, I I really like Double. I thought Double, they're very busy stories. I like the vibe it's tapping into, that sort of 70s Cold War spy thriller vibe. Um, and it's a great new set of characters. It Again, it feels like a proper spin-off because it's setting up its own little regular, what feels like, it feels like a pilot for a regular cast series, really. Um, and you can feel those characters being set up in this. Um, and I hope it does get its own series in the same way Torchwood Soho eventually did. Um, after a couple of main range appearances by uh, Norton Fulgate. It's also doing something similar here at the end of the year um, by casting itself forward into the future and playing about with the characters from The Impossible Planet and The Satan Pit. Um, now, I haven't heard the third story yet. I've only heard the first one so far, but I've really enjoyed those. Again, it's nice little standalone plays. And it's something that you can go into if you haven't seen Torchwood, but you have seen one of the best episodes of the new series of Doctor Who. Um, so I really like it taking those little diversions away from TV Torchwood into something a little bit different. Yeah, I'd absolutely like to see more of that as well. Just uh, again, you know, it could sort of filter away into it being its own its own series, its own spin off, and. I'd quite like to see the surviving characters from the Impossible Planet Satan Pit brought back together. We've had them all separate, and the running theme in this trilogy has been the Ood. Um, but I'd quite like to actually see them put back together, and you know, maybe they have to navigate what happened when they met the Doctor, and you know, what Torch would have set them onto since, and all this kind of thing. Uh, there could be a nice little conspiracy type thriller set in the future going on there. So there's definitely potential for that. Um, before we move on to February, I'm also going to very quickly mention uh, The Dead Star, which was an audio novel uh, by Kate Orman, and it was narrated by Michael Troughton, and it was just an absolutely wonderful piece of very early Second Doctor. You know, this is before the Highlanders, before they met Jamie, so it's it's proper Second Doctor, Polly and Ben, early season four. Um, and it sort of it pivots in the middle, actually. It completely changes setting, and the first half and the second half are very, very different, but both are extremely entertaining. Um, it, it was a very, very fun story, and the highlight of the audio novel's range for me so far. Uh, that being said, I am in the middle of listening to uh, Box of Terrors now and haven't finished it yet, so... I can't, I can't completely comment. Uh, but yeah, The Dead Star, very, very strong release, an awful lot to enjoy there. Shall we, shall we travel in time to February? Yes, let's, let's move forward one month and a, uh, into the future as, as we do 12 times a year. <laughs> well, if, if I can, if I can be bothered, uh, I will edit in a TARDIS sound effect. So to, to, to demonstrate our time traveling from January 2023 to February of oh, yes, please. February. Yeah. Uh, so February 2023, um, we've actually picked different favourite releases. I think really throughout the year we're kind of half and half. Some months we pick the same, some months we pick different. <laughs> this is one where we have picked different, um, and I have gone for. The Eleventh Doctor Adventures, All of Time and Space, which see, oh, see that was the that I was caught between the two that we're going to talk about here to pick as my favourite. Um, so I'm getting to uh, I'm getting to, to have my cake and eat it as far as this month goes. <laughs> I mean, I was torn between the same two as well. It's worked um, out very well then. <laughs> it has, yes. Um, so All of Time and Space is. 
I mean, this this run of Eleventh Doctor Adventures, which is sort of set to conclude in the next few months, um, it's been brilliant. Like we we've got such a good companion in Valerie. We really have. She's just such a great character, such an interesting character, and uh, it really really does feel like they're kind of doing series six point five, seven point five, seven point five, I guess. Um, it, it it does feel like it's a series that we never got. Um, that they're, they're sticking fairly closely to the format of the Eleventh Doctor era and that kind of thing. And yeah, I really really like where it's going. And all of time and space just sort of built on a really really strong first set that we got last year. You know, Geronimo was absolutely brilliant as well. Um, and I'm really really liking where this is going. And it's it feels fresh. It feels original. It feels like there is a coherent story arc there. It feels like characters matter. Um, and it's generally been written by sort of some of Big Finish's, should we say, emerging talent, younger writers. And it's good to see that a range that they are sort of putting uh, some younger writers on is doing so well and is producing something so brilliant. What do you think? I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, so again, yes, it feels like a, a breath of fresh air um, to, to Big Finish, it, and it feels like it stands out because of that. Um, it just sort of ties into what we were saying earlier about there being a strong authorial voice here, because even though he's not writing, and not, I can't remember if he's written any of the episodes so far, he probably has, um, but he's producing and overseeing and orchestrating the whole thing. It's Alfie Shaw, previously known for the Short Trips range. Um, and it's nice that he's getting something a bit higher profile to work on. It's nice that he ha- has had the opportunity to work on a full length series like this, full cast with um, a sort of it's it's quite high profile because it's the first full cast Eleventh Doctor series that we've had. I know there was one box set previously, um, but it's it feels very unusual for Big Finish. Because uh, to, to have a new series Doctor in a full length series like this, because like the only thing they've done before in that way was David Tennant in Dalek Universe, and that was a special case because it was the apocalypse and they suddenly had all his free time. Well, yeah, um, it happened purely because of COVID. So yeah, it's COVID. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> this this you know you know what I'm saying. This feels unusual because we're getting. Longer form storytelling at Big Finish with a new series Doctor. We've had it with Paul McGann and you know the other classic Doctors, but we don't really get it very often with a new series Doctor. Um, and it, as we say, it feels because they're, they're very de- de- very deliberately going for the new series format, um, and that is reflected in the finished product because it feels like you're listening to a proper series. You're building up towards a finale here. Um, I, I think it's great. I think Jacob Dudman is very, very good as the 11th Doctor. Um, I think Safia Ingar is incredible as Valerie. And I am really, really impressed that they've managed to slot in this new little 11th Doctor era. Um, into a gap I didn't think would work, but is working marvellously. Um, so I have not but the highest praise for this series, it's it's been a joy, and I'm I'm actually really looking forward to everything being out and being able to listen to it episode by episode. Um, and looking, you know, looking forward to doing a rerun through it. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely something I'm going to be doing probably towards the end of next year. Just kind of bunch it together as its own series and do all. Well, no, you said thirteen. It's fourteen episodes now, isn't it? But do all fourteen episodes together. Um, and just kind of enjoy how well it works as this sort of coherent run in the style of, you know, BBC in 2012 or whenever it was, Series 6, 7 was. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. Really, really good. Um, I, I, I am enjoying it. I'm not going to say it's perfect. It definitely still has its flaws, but, you know, so did the entire 11th Doctor era. Uh, but it, just in terms of its ambition and what it's doing in its arc, you can't help but praise it, and it is really enjoyable. It's really, really good stuff. Absolutely. Um, and uh, the the other February choice, your choice, which is one that I did very nearly pick as well, uh, was the third Doctor Adventures, Return of Joe Jones. And 
I I quite like what they've done here. It's something Big Finish is doing quite a lot of at the moment, which is revisiting uh, companions later on in their own timeline, and it's something Big Finish has always done, really. Um, and it kind of feels like we've got quite a few older companions, kind of, they've returned, and we don't know what happens to them next. We're there with Perry, we're there with Mel, we're there with uh, Joe, we've been there with Nyssa, um, so yeah, it, it does seem to be a bit of a running theme, but I'm generally enjoying it. And I think that this set in particular worked really well. It, it kind of had some very, very beautiful and emotional moments. And the third doctor works well with an older Joe, definitely. So go on. Why is it your favorite? Why have you picked it? So I was, a, I, I had been calling for a long time before this came out for them to do a little run between the Green Death and um, the Time Warrior with a new companion for the Third Doctor because I think there's a decent little gap in between there that you can do a companion in there that sort of would let him on, that would sort of go into how he works post Joe and pre Sarah, I suppose, um, and sort of explore the Third Doctor's mindset in that little gap between seasons 10 and 11. Um, so I was really surprised when I heard that this was where that was going to fit for him um, because it feels a little bit strange and unusual to go from the Third... So following the Third Doctor's point of view here, it feels a bit strange to go from him saying goodbye to young Joe to immediately meeting up with and exploring with older Joe. Um, and I think I think my preference for that gap would have probably have been to have another companion in there that he doesn't necessarily gel with just as well as Joe, um, someone he's maybe with out of necessity, just to get into his mindset and examine how he feels after she has left. Um I think I think that probably would have been my preference, but when you're looking at this from the third doctor's point of view, you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. The whole point of it is, what's it like for Joe to start traveling with her doctor again after so many years apart? Um, that's the sort of in real world perspective, um, because you know there has been fifty odd years since you know Joe was in the series, um. And is now back traveling with the third doctor again. Um, that's the way I think you're meant to look at it from. Um, or that's the way I think you're meant to look at it rather. Um, it changes the format for the third doctor adventures. We drop down into a two, two part serials um, rather than four or six parters or seven parters indeed, as they're doing now as well. Um, I think one of the joys was it had been a little while since we had heard Katie Manning in the Third Doctor Adventures, just for one reason and another between lockdown and and whatnot. Um, and it's great to hear her and Tim Trelore back again. Um, it's really good. It feels like you. I got a lot of nostalgia for the early parts of the range whenever I first heard these, but they're really strong stories as well. Um, and they do sort of tie into Joe's interests and. They treat her as a bit more of a serious character than the TV show sort of did at the time. Um, Joe often didn't get as much of a spotlight as she deserved, I think. Um, and just by the series, I know she's been very well loved by the cast and crew and by fans. Um, but this treats her a lot more, it gives her a lot more agency in things, I think, and um, she gets to stand her own a little bit more alongside the Doctor. She's had a lot more experience. She's been away and done her own thing, and he actually needs to be reminded of, uh, reminded of that a few times during this run. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing more from it. I don't think they've announced any more Third Doctor and Joe stories, but I'm looking forward to hearing this run continued because there's a lot of potential. Um, I really like the way it treats Joe and I like the respect it treats Joe with, and I'm very ready for a lot more of that. I think there's an awful lot of potential for it to go somewhere rather brilliant and sort of, you know, I just the one thing it needs to do is at some point drop Joe off at home safe and sound and just leave it there let's let's not mess with any of that please uh but otherwise yeah it's it's a really really wonderful way of filling yet another gap that you know is there for big finish to sort of play with um 
like you, was kind of hoping for another companion or hoping Liz would join him in the TARDIS or even just having a sort of third doctor solo era. Sometimes he hangs around with units, sometimes he's off and about, but um, I, I do think that there's there's some opportunity to explore what the third doctor would do on his own as well. Uh, but if this is how that gap is filled, I'm more than happy with it. It's it's a really, really sort of great idea. Um, and it, it has given us so far three really good stories, and I'm looking forward to more. Um, so if I can be bothered, I will edit the TARDIS sound effect in again here, and we'll we'll move forward to March. Um, which, which does traditionally come after February. Um, we have picked the same release which is the fourth doctor adventures uh series 12 new frontiers kind of part one of this year's fourth doctor series um a couple of really good stories you know margaret's nicely reintroduced we get a good ice warrior caper in ice heist and then until the lost is sort of a, a good solid bit of sci-fi really and again you know we get to see the fourth doctor leela and margaret team kind of doing its thing and it's it's kind of just a normal day for them a normal adventure for them a fairly sort of solid traditional four-parter um which i quite like because ice heist isn't so much a fairly traditional fourth parter it it does kind of it does a few interesting things it's certainly not something you'd have got in 1976 or whatever 1977 so um yeah I, i thought this was a pretty solid set what about you Yes, I really enjoy it, and I'm wondering: is it even if is is does it would do, would it work better if we talk about both sets here? Um, because I know we have conflict in the month that the second one came out as well. But um, I really enjoy this run. I thought Margaret was a great addition to the team. I think um, Neris Hughes was wonderful, um, and seems to relish getting into into the role of Margaret. Um, it's she's a companion very much in the mold of Evelyn Smythe, um, which is a wonderful mold to fit into, um, and I I adore hearing from her um, in in these two sets of the season. I really hope we get more in future from Margaret and the Fourth Doctor. Um, so I, I again I love this series because it injects something new into an era of Doctor Who that that we all know and love um but can tend i think you know whenever whenever you're sticking to the fourth doctor and leila and canine and things um just as an example you do eventually get used to that pairing and you do slightly tune out because you lose a little bit of the stakes because we know what happens to the fourth doctor in the end we know what happens to leila in the end we know what happens to canine and so on by adding in margaret you get a new element that we can invest in um, as as listeners to the you that's that's something that we're there to follow we don't know what's going to happen to margaret whenever we're listening to these um at least for the first time um and it gives us something that we can invest in and pay a bit more attention to i think um that's why i love new companions so much that's why i, I think they bring a, 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 a very dynamic element to the stories they're in um, and this sto- this whole series sets one and two both work really well with that um, because Margaret is put in genuine danger at points um, she's put in genuine danger when they meet the Weeping Angels and again in her last story The Ghost of Margaret um, it's 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 brilliant it's it's the best way I think you can run a series like this Um purely because this is it gives us someone that we're following along we're going on the journey with um, and it's not characters that we are getting in just from tv whose futures we already know um it's it's more exciting i think um to have a new companion or new characters along for the ride like that i also quite like the fact that we are getting uh, it feels like quite a big series there's a good mix of two-parters and four-parters overall okay you know the first set is just four-parters but we actually have quite a few stories with this team now just because of the way the episodes were divvied up and because it's the fourth doctor adventures we get the extra two-parters stuck on the end as well and 
yeah, I really like the way that the whole thing was handled and it, it, it does feel like its own mini coherent series that you could just drop in somewhere before the invisible enemy. Um, yeah, I thought it was absolutely great. Um, and it, it's it's definitely one of the stronger Fourth Doctor runs. I still think I'm preferring the eSpace stuff that we had a few years ago, but this is definitely, it's definitely up there as a good one. Um, shall, we, shall we head to um, what comes after March? April. Shall we head to April? Let's. So cue, <laughs> cue TARDIS sound effect. So April, um, and in April um, we've we've agreed on the same set, and I think it was always going to be this one. Really, it's uh, Beyond Bannerman Road. Rani takes on the world Beyond Bannerman Road because we'd always wanted this, hadn't we? Anybody that ever watched the Sarah Jane Adventures wanted more, um, and unfortunately, we're never going to get more Sarah Jane Adventures. However, it did bring us some absolutely brilliant characters and one of these obviously was Rani and we've got Clyde in it too uh, we've got Geeta in it. it, it really does feel like the perfect sequel series to Sarah Jane Adventures, Like I, I wouldn't have done it any more differently at all um, so yeah absolutely loved this one and it, it really did sort of take me back to not quite my childhood, I was a little bit older than the average Sarah Jane Adventures target audience type person, but um, I did enjoy watching it. It was a great series, and it, it's it's been brought back in the best way it possibly could. I think with this, um, and it was definitely the highlight of April. What about you? What do you think? Um, I loved it, um, and I I was the target audience for the Sarah Jane Adventures at the time. I was smack bang in the middle of that little demographic that they were targeting, um, and I I remember the Sarah Jane Adventures being more popular than Doctor Who among my you know school friends and whatnot. I knew people who watched the Sarah Jane Adventures who didn't watch Doctor Who, um, which is just a testament to how wonderful it was and how wonderful Elizabeth Sladen was as Sarah Jane. Um, and this set feels like a real love letter to it. Um, the first episode feels very deliberately that way. Um, certainly with the little... Um, it, it feels like a sort of echo of the final little montage at the end of the last episode of the Sarah Jane Adventures where they flash back through the um, you know, various clips of Sarah Jane. Um, and it's where Rani's talking about all the people that she knew and the lives that she touched and whatnot and lists off the Bannerman Road gang, uh, Brendan from K9 and Company, Natalie from the Sarah Jane spin-off from Big Finish. Um, and it brings, it actually, I, I didn't realise this when I first started listening to it and it wasn't until they started playing that, um, and the story goes on forever, piece of music from the Sarah Jane Adventures. It's the same composer um, who wrote the music for the Sarah Jane Adventures, does the music for this, which is brilliant um, because it does tie in um, musically then with that previous series as well. Um, and I really love getting to hear, I think I said this at the time, but Rani was being sort of set up as the as Sarah Jane's protege in the Sarah Jane Adventures. It feels right then that she is the lead of this series and she's sort of continuing that legacy. Um, and it, it, does, it, it does feel like that as Rani's mission is to continue Sarah's legacy. She's become the journalist. She has her own podcast series um, of investigative journalism. Um, and is, is is saving the world at the same time. Um, I love that little things like the sonic lipstick have passed down. I think Rani has it. Um, I uh, can't remember if it was her or Clyde had the watch. Uh, one of them has Sarah Jane's um, little watch, which is brilliant. Um, and it's just great hearing those two characters again um, back together, same actors and whatnot. Luke's coming back as well in the next series, uh, Mrs. Wormwood. Um, it does feel like we're getting that little coda and extension of the Sarah Jane adventures with all these characters and a similar sort of ethos, but it does also feel like it has grown up along with its audience. It's that little bit more mature. Um, it's not aimed at at the younger audience now. Um, you're getting things, you're, they're sort of playing about with Clyde and Rani's relationship a little bit. There's a little bit of a will they, won't they aspect of that, I think, that is 
maybe going to get followed up on in the next set. Um, it's playing about with stuff like Clive's relationship with his fiance, who turns out to be not what she appears. Clyde goes through some fairly traumatic things in that last episode um, of this set, and I'm hoping that gets followed up on and focused in on in the next set, um, which I'm very excited for. I don't think it's very far away now. I'm very much looking forward to hearing it. Um, but yes, this was a real highlight of the year. It felt like a series was long overdue, but I think they waited long enough to make it feel right. Uh, like, I don't think I would have done it any earlier. I was just ready for it whenever it came along. So um, I'm very pleased with this. I'm very happy, and I can't wait to get uh, the next set. And I, I hope it goes on beyond the next set as well. Absolutely. Um, like it, Two sets of this will not be enough. Two sets of this will never be enough. And I appreciate that it, it's, you know, it is asking for some of the busiest actors in the country to turn up and play characters they played 15 years ago. But you know what? It's worth it. It's great. Um, and I, I am genuinely really, really enjoying it. I'm enjoying this first set. And, it needs a re-listen probably before the second set. And again, I can't wait for it. Um, they've just, they've got it absolutely right. They've got the tone absolutely right. It's got its own identity and it is very much the spiritual sequel to um, Sarah Jane Adventures that it should be. So yeah, looking forward to what's happening moving forward. Um, and, you know, big finish. If you're listening, Rani versus the Rani is such an obvious idea. Just, <laughs> just, just saying, just saying. They could call it <laughs> the two Rani's. They could. They could. <laughs> I uh, messed with everybody's expectations. And I'm shamelessly stealing that joke. <laughs> yes. I mean, the big Finnish intern on Twitter will fa- like steal that joke, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. You can have it. <laughs> Sorry, I've just given away your joke. Um, <laughs> so it wasn't my mind. joke I stole it to begin with. Yeah, that's true. I stole it from Ronnie Corbett, nonetheless. <laughs> Indeed. Anyway, um, shall we shall we time travel forward to May? So, insert TARDIS sound effect here. You could also just say warp, warp, and be done with it. <laughs> Fork, fork, and be done with it. Anyway, we're on to May. (laughs) And May is um, the month that Dark Season came out, so that's what we're going to talk about, uh, because we both agreed that it was the standout release of that month. Um, It was a much bigger release than I was expecting, actually. It's it's sort of four four four-parters, and even though the episodes aren't epically long, they're still over an hour each, we're still looking at sort of four 20-minute episodes. It's, it's not a million miles away from the the format of the original series. Um, you know, they were fairly short episodes. And yeah, it, it's just brilliant. It's the perfect way of bringing back something that's over 30 years old. And, you know, it, I still can't quite believe that Kate Winslet's done Big Finish. I've heard it, and I still don't believe it's real. Um, and she had a pretty solid role as well. I was kind of expecting it. Oh, she'll pop up for 10 minutes in the last episode. And So, yeah, wow, this was such a good series. This was such a good way of doing it. Uh, we had a fantastic new team of characters supported by the fantastic old team of characters. Um, we had the original villain back. We had so many great performances. It's a huge, huge cast list. Uh, Bridget Forsyth was in it, who's you know very sadly passed away in the last couple of weeks. Um, blimey, could they have done this any better? And could they have made this any more amazing? Oh, yes, they could. It had an episode actually by Russell T. Davis in it as well. That's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I can't run out of amazing things to say about this. It was just so flipping good. Um, I'm hoping I've left something good for you to say about it. So yeah, go ahead. I I I, I was really impressed. With, so just so you said it sort of feels like a much bigger release. I went into it expecting four hour long episodes because that's the way a lot of big finish works. And when I saw this was four discs, four episodes, you know, four stories. I assumed right, be an hour long episode. It'll you know be 
you know, four episodes, Kate Winslet will be in one of them, and that will be that. It's twelve episodes long. It's it's it brings back the same sort of serialized structure. Well, you've just brilliantly corrected me there because yes, it's three parters, not four parters. It's four three parters. There we go. Yeah, so it it brings back the same structure as the original series, um, um, which was th- three part serials, um, which I didn't expect. I suppose I should have done, but I didn't, and it was it was incredible whenever it actually did come along. Um, because I suddenly realized we we're going to, you know, be able to eke this set out a bit longer. It felt much chunkier as a result of that. Um, so that was a big positive. Um, I, I didn't expect them to focus so heavily in on the new team. I did expect more involvement from the originals. Kate Winslet, I'm extremely surprised. Um, first of all, that she did big finish in the first place. That still feels like a fever dream, but, um, she gets the most she's the most heavily involved out of the three original cast members. Thomas is he's only on one telephone call and Marcy turns up for the last episode um right at the end. Um but Rate and Kate Winslow are in it, you know, sort of throughout the series a little bit. Um, which is incredible. And yeah, if you have Kate Winslet at big finish, that is what you want. You want decent material, which this gives us. Um so that's that's great. I really really enjoyed um, hearing this. I only did. I had never seen. I'd heard of Dark Season. I'd never seen Dark Season. Um, so I I watched the series at maybe a fortnight before this, and it feels incredible whenever you start listening to the Big Finish version because it ties in so well and it captures the tone and feeling of the original series really well. Um, and it, it it does feel like a natural continuation of it. Um, stuff like mis- you know the build up to Mister Eldritch's appearance feels momentous, um, and is testament to the quality both of the original series and of this continuation that you are getting excited and you're going yes here comes the big villain here comes the big body. Um, when Mister Eldritch you know gets teased a few times and then he gets a little bit he gets a sort of villainous reveal at the very end um, of the third serial, um, yeah, it's fantastic. The new team do feel like they have potential to go on um, and do more, even if the originals aren't included. I would like a, a bit more Marcy in future ones. Um, I would like uh, I would like a little bit more of her in particular. I don't think there was quite enough Marcy in this. Um, I I was a little bit put out that she was held back until the very last episode, but once she's there, she takes over completely, and she's brilliant while she does it. Um, I'd be very surprised if they do get Kate Winslet back for more. We can live in hope, but um, I I would be happy for Marcy to sort of step into her role and 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 have a bit more of a highlight in the next series if they do more. Um, yeah, it was just incredible. Um, something different and standalone and. As uh, you know, again, stands out a bit from the rest of Big Finish's output, um, which I, I love. It, f- it felt like a proper event release, a proper special occasion, and lived up to it, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It was just Big Finish firing on all cylinders, and it, it just shows that there really is room for something like you know, dark season to come back and run and run and run. It felt like it was setting up for so much more. And I sincerely hope we are getting more than just just the uh, four brilliant stories that were in this set. Um, I have to admit, when listening to it, I spent the whole time going, oh, this is what class could have been. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can it, see that. Like I, I, I have to admit, I liked class more than most. I think that I, did, I you know, I, it wasn't amazing. It was, it was just a nice little extra bit of Doctor Who related Who universe, Who universe content. <laughs> um, it, you know, it was just nice to have, and you know, the characters were quite good. They were very well played. You know, there, there is quite a lot to find in class that was uh, quite good, um, and. But it, but it was still lacking. It was still missing something. And I think this dark season set just it was everything that class should have been. It, it's it's what I wanted class to be. It's what I hoped class would be. Um. 
so it, it, yeah it, it's it'll be i really really hope there's more from big finish i hope there's more class from big finish as well but if if you're going to have only one school sets sci-fi series it's going to have to be dark season i'm afraid um because it was rather great maybe maybe they could do a crossover <laughs> Class season. <laughs> Dark Can you class. imagine? <laughs> Cleason. Imagine, imagine Miss Quill meeting Marcy. That would be that would be incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I think I'll stick to Dark Season on its own. However, if you want to drop a Doctor into Dark Season, I ain't going to complain. Um. Let's let's officially Hooniverse eyes it. There you go. There's a new word, Hooniverse eyes. It feels like it's begging for some for uh, Sylvester McCoy to drop in on it. Really? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Seventh Doctor and Ace. <laughs> so we'll um, we'll time travel for one last time. This episode, we're going to time travel to June. So warp, warp, done. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, one of our picks for June was uh, Angels and Demons, the fourth Doctor Adventures. That was your choice, but we we kind of covered that with New Frontiers before. Um, but, you know, I'll say again, it was such a good run, and Angels and Demons, I think, was definitely the stronger of the two sets. I think they were both very, very strong sets, but I think Angels and Demons, I mean, it just had that amazing Weeping Angels story, and I still find it weird how well they work on audio, the Weeping Angels. Like, they are absolutely brilliant. Big Finish have not done a bad Weeping Angels story yet, and I just don't think they're going to, to be perfectly honest. Um, However, our other pick was the Seventh Doctor Adventures, Far From Home. Um, And... At the time, I joked that we should start a tradition of just naming Seventh Doctor box sets after uh, MCU films, uh, because obviously that's the key to making them amazing. Um, Not quite true, but Far From Home was great. It had two really, really good, really enjoyable stories. I think that three-parters are something that are working quite well in this new, wonderful box set era. Uh, We've had some very strong five... uh, Sorry fifth doctor three parters as well uh this year um but this was great and i think that the the absolute highlight for me was operation dusk uh, which was by alfie shaw and it was the vashta narada during the blitz with the seventh doctor in full dark manipulative mode and you know it threw the forge in there and it it, it really made me feel that this this new era of the Seventh Doctor travelling with Harry Sullivan and Naomi was going to work really well. Like every single character in this fits in to their role perfectly. Sort of seeing Harry getting to be a bit of a hero in World War Two is is just it's what the character was made for almost. Um, Naomi's arc also an incredibly strong story, some really good concepts, and you know the Doctor gets called out for being the Doctor, uh, which is always interesting, and it was done in a really interesting way here um what are your thoughts i love this set i thought this was um definitely i absolutely agree that well i was going to say i definitely agree it was one of the highlights of my year obviously it is because we're sitting here talking about it um i think operation darkness was the highlight um i was really i i i i was really impressed with the way that they, they, they use the Vash Narada sort of as a cover story um, for the fact that they are not the primary villains. Um, and we've talked about this before. I will always take every opportunity to talk about it again. Spoiler warning for the set, etc., etc. They bring back the Forge. And that felt incredible. It's one of those things I've seen people say, um, you know, oh, it's a Seventh Doctor story set in World War Two. Obviously, it was going to be the Forge. No one thought it was. No one thought we were ever going to hear the Forge again. Like really, um, which is why it's such a brilliant surprise that it's, uh, you know, whenever it drops, it's kept a secret. It suddenly happens that it's revealed that yes, it is the Forge, um, and it's it's a fantastic moment. It's jaw dropping. Um, 
And again, this is one of the ones that I'd mentioned earlier. I've held back my my favorite special, my favorite stories to do a little special playlist at the end of the year. Uh, this is one of them, um, in the form of Operation Darkness. Um, brilliant story, brilliant twist. I love it. I love that sort of it does take on a sort of noir detective feel at, at points. Um, which is uh, wonderful. And I love the Seventh Doctor and his companions setting out with a mission. And that's what this one feels like as well. Um, so that's a big positive. Naomi's arc is fantastic as well. It does get into, you know, it splits Naomi off and gives her a bit more of a highlight than I think I have heard from her so far. I haven't done her unit stories, but I have done her Seventh Doctor adventures. And I think this highlights her as a character the best. Um, and it gives the Seventh Doctor and Harry some time. Harry... You know, realizing this is not exactly the same doctor that he traveled with before. It's a different style of adventuring. It's a different way of doing things. Um, and it gives them these, you know, it gives them these really momentous challenges to overcome in the form of, you know, the vastness of space and the doctor having to persuade others to help him trying it his way and getting caught out, um, and, and called out on it, as you say. Um, I'm I I I I think these I think this series is maybe being slept on a little bit by the wider audience, um, and it's a shame because these are two really really strong stories. Um, I I love them both. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're really really good stories, and um, I know we're kind of pausing now for this sort of last adventure two sets that we're going to get from uh, Big Finish, but. I really hope we revisit this Harry and Naomi Seventh Doctor era soon because I, I genuinely do want to hear more from this team. I want to hear these adventures continue. I've really, really enjoyed everything so far. You know, the first set last year was, it was very good, but this was the one that kind of really made me sit up and go, oh, yeah, they're onto something here. This is this is going to be some really, really good Seventh Doctor content. Um, so yeah, let's let's keep it going. Um, and you know, the Hooniverse will never have enough Harry Sullivan. The Fourth Doctor era certainly doesn't have enough Harry Sullivan. So let's let's keep it going. Um, well, even though we've been time traveling this episode, we've actually run out of time. So we'll pop back in the next episode to do the second half of the year. Uh, I've just realised that I should have done some joke about our TARDIS has broken down. Oh dear, what a shame. We'll wander <laughs> around in we've, a quarry we've the fluid, for a little bit. We've, we've drained the fluid links. Yes, we have. We've drained the fluid links. So we, there's, there's a city just over there. I reckon we can pretty easily go and get some mercury for them. Shouldn't be any kind of hold up or problem. This is where um, this is where you put in the little Dalek exterminating ray gun noises, yeah. <laughs> um, well, we'll try it and do it at the speed of the colorized version of the Daleks. However, I fear it might take us the speed of the original version of the Daleks to get this all sorted out. <laughs> but we will be back um, in just over a week. Actually, we're, we're changing our release date, um, so this will be going out on our Monday. This will be our final monday episode uh we're going to be back uh on a friday so it's it's a little bit of a wait i'm afraid it's it's going to be a week and a bit before you hear part two so yes it is the slow version uh, sorry the original version of the daleks um we'll get back and let you know how we get on and we'll probably talk about some big finish releases from the second half of the year as well uh, but in the meantime, I will say a big thank you to Connor for joining me. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And we'll be back for more podcasting soon. Uh, after Christmas, though. This will be before Christmas. The next one will be after Christmas. So we'll we'll see you after Christmas. Have a great Christmas. Every single wonderful podcast listener. Thank you. Goodbye now. <laughs> <laughs>